Hello. I look great, don't I? <laughs> um, my name is Mr. McAndrews, and <clears throat> this is my workout outfit. I'm going to get an exercise bike later. Um, got my green tea here. I am going to start my drawing lesson in just a minute. I don't know if you can hear that, but in the background, I have some 3D prints printing, which I forgot that I started about 20 minutes ago. And I'm going to go double check them and make sure that it's actually started properly. We have a goal. Uh, let me get the little cover. Um, yeah, I have 3D printers. Okay, this, this isn't the right cover. <laughs> uh, boom. I tried it. Oh, my eyes twitching. Um, I tried to set everything up before I stepped away so everything would be here and ready to go, and it relatively is. So, hello again. My name is Mr. Mick, and I am an art teacher at Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy in Camden, New Jersey. Let me show you my school. This is my school. Um, I am a certified visual arts teacher in the state of New Jersey. Um, I've taught at Creative Arts for, this is, this is my sixth year, but I've been there for longer. And um, I teach at Rutgers Future Scholars in the summer. I, I have an, a new microphone here. Let me check to see that the levels on that are right. Um, so uh, I thank you for checking out my class. Um, I'm going to be doing some drawing lessons and some other digital art lessons. And uh, I'm hoping that in this current crisis, I really hope that that, that stuff in the background is not too big of a deal in terms of the noise. Um, but I really hope that in this current crisis, uh, um, and students who are sh stuck at home, or anybody else really that's stuck at home that wants to maybe use this as an opportunity to do some online classes, um, learn some drawing, can uh, take advantage of this class that I'm going to do every day. Um, I'm going to do it uh, Monday through Saturday. I've been streaming since last Sunday, but I'm going to take off on Sundays. So um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 1.30 to 2.30. Uh, it'll be a class. Um, we'll do different drawing examples. I might do some digital art. I like the idea. I think for the most part, everyone probably has access to pencil and paper, and everyone acts, has access to a phone or digital art make or, or uh, you know, a, a iPhone or Android phone or whatever the case might be, maybe a tablet or maybe even their computer. Um, and we can do some digital art too. Uh, and that way we can work with color and other things. I don't know if you have paint. I don't know if you have watercolor. I don't know if you have color pencils. Um, and those are all things that I would normally use in my classroom. But I can pretty much guarantee that if you're watching this on YouTube, you have access to a, a digital device like a phone or a tablet or a computer. And I'm going to be making some art using those as well as pencil and paper so that you can take your drawings and then bring them into the digital realm of being so being you can be able to ink them and color them. Um, and then the, the benefit of working digitally is that there's no cleanup. <laughs> and once you're done, once you're done with you just hit save or you hit print or you hit share and you share it out and you don't have to worry about cleaning your brushes and stuff and uh, but I do like uh, regular traditional painting and um, I've created some Google I've created a Google Classroom you can email me brian.mcandrews at gmail.com or if you prefer my work email actually these both of these emails work camden.k12.nj.us right this is my uh, district email and this is my personal email either one works um, I've created a Google Classroom so people can um, upload their artwork. Um, you can get feedback from me. You can get uh, feedback from your other uh, classmates. Once we get enough people going, we actually have a proper class. Um, no one's really taken advantage of that yet, but I've only been doing. I haven't even been doing this for a week. And if that ever actually happens, I understand. If you ever want to email me your artwork and just get say, hey, I followed your drawing lesson and check it out, or Maybe, you can, maybe I can give you some feedback. Um, I'm really doing this especially for those people, those 
kids around the United States or maybe even around the world that are at home and want to have an art class that don't have access to one right now and want to get some art instruction and want to interact with a class of other students. So that's why I'm offering these one hour long classes online. Um, and that's why I'm offering the Google Classroom. All of that is free. Um, I don't have anything to sell otherwise anyway. I don't have any online anything really other than like my email and stuff. I got rid of all my social media just because you can't really find me on Facebook or Instagram. Maybe eventually I'll open those things up again, but I found that I just didn't really come away from those platforms feeling like a better person in a good mood. I generally come away from those things feeling pretty grumpy because I guess of all the pol politics and negativity that can end up there. Um, so I didn't, I don't see a need for social media in my life. Although YouTube I get is a kind of social media, but I'm hoping that people can use this as a way to work on some art. And, um, maybe if they want to learn to draw, uh, they can use these classes that I go step by step and learning the principles of drawing. Um, we're going to keep working on that, um, uh, for a little while longer, um, the way that I teach drawing, because uh, I believe that drawing is something that anyone can learn to do. I'm just going to put some more tape over this over here. <laughs> I really want to cover. I don't want my little view here of myself to distract from, because I'll look at this, this little picture here instead of looking here. And actually, I forgot to put you there. Hold on. I hope that 3D printer is not that big of a deal. I guess, well, this will be an experiment, but this is you. <laughs> so I put that there so that I am looking at a little face and I say, hello. Um, so uh, I'm hoping, well, anyway, the elements of perspective. Um, as developed by uh, someone named Bruce McIntyre, I came about learning about Bruce McIntyre through the work of Walt Stanchfield and his... Um, his uh, class notes, which uh, were assembled into books called um, Drawn to Life, I believe. I don't think I've shown them yet. They are just great. Um, they're great art books for anyone. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me if you were studying animation or you were studying painting or you just wanted to read someone who, um, he's a very inspirational person. Uh, he often has things in there about ways to think about things going on in your life and other stuff. He's just, he's just great. It's kind of like another great art book. If I'm going to recommend some art books here, um, Robert Henri art spirit. This is an amazing, uh, I've never seen this that I've seen. This is the one that I own. Um, wow. $500. Oh, oh, what? <laughs> $500. Um, I wonder if I have a copy of that here. I apologize if my dogs bark. Um, you know, they they are Pomeranians, a.k.a. Barkeranians. And actually, I have in here uh, the date. I got this November 6th, 2009, this book. Um, and I have lots of little um, notes in here, little pieces of paper for sections that I thought were really important and interesting. Um, let's, uh, let me read a section here, um, just to start off this, uh, this drawing session. Um, I might, I might go grab Pepper real quick. Okay. Just give me one second. Jackal! Jackal! See, Pepper follows Jack. Whatever way Jack goes, Pepper goes. Jack's barking, Pepper's barking. So Pepper goes to school with me. Mm, he's very sweet. Uh, Pomeranians are... Bokeranians. They like to bark. 
All right, chill pepper, have a seat. So I said I was going to read some of this. So let me read some of this. The opening. And I'll just read a bit. Art. When really, and this is Robert Unrai, the art spirit. Unri, Unrai. The, um, uh. <laughs> art. When really understood is the province of every human being. It is simply a question of doing things, anything, well. It is not an outside extra thing. When the artist is alive in any person, whatever his kind or her kind of work may be, he, he or she becomes an inventive, searching, daring, self-expressing creature. He becomes interesting to other people. He disturbs, upsets, enlightens, and he opens ways for a better understanding. Where those who are not artists are trying to close the book, he opens it, shows there are still more pages possible. The world would stagnate without them, and the world would be beautiful with them, for he or she is interesting to himself, and he is interesting to others. He does not have to be a painter or sculptor to be an artist. He can work in any medium. He simply has to find the gain in the work itself, not outside of it. Museums of art will not make a country an art country, but where there is this, the art spirit, there will be precious works to fill museums. Better still, there will be the happiness that is in the making. Art tends towards balance, order, judgment of relative values, the laws of growth, the economy of living, very good things for anyone to be interested in. The work of the art student is no light matter. Few have the courage and stamina to see it through. You have to make up your mind to be alone in many ways. We like sympathy and we like to be in company. It is easier than going it alone, but alone. One gets acquainted with himself, grows up and on, not stopping with the crowd. It costs to do this. If you succeed somewhat, you may have to pay for it as well as enjoy it all your life. Lots of great sayings. Cherish your own emotions and never undervalue them. We are not here to do what has already been done. <laughs> this is just paragraph. But this, this was a book that was written because students of his would write down the things that he would say during class. And then and, and uh, he got wind of this, I believe, and then he looked at what they had and, and they wanted to put it into a book and he helped them put it together. Um, I have little interest in teaching you what I know. I wish to stimulate you to tell me what you know. In my office toward you, I am simply trying to improve my own environment. Know what the old masters did. Know how they composed their pictures, but do not fall into the conventions they established. These conventions were right for them, and they are wonderful. They made their language. You make yours. They can help you. All the past can help you. An art student must be a master from the beginning. That is, he must be master of such as he has. By being now master of such as he has, there is promise that he will be master in the future. Be master of such as you have. Now, how are we masters of such that we have. What do we have? We're just learning to draw. But we're learning the elements of perspective and we're working on really simple examples here. Um, and it's like, well, this is, is this a master work? If you are working on the elements of perspective and if you're taking these examples that we're working on and you're really working at them, you're trying the examples over and over, maybe you're even on your own outside of the time that you listen to the, lect the lecture here or the class here, um, you're drawing these examples, or maybe you're looking around and seeing other areas on other places where you can look at something and sketch and see if you could apply the principle of or the element of foreshortening in your drawing. That's you mastering what you have. You have these elements of perspective. If you can master them, um, within that is a lot of power in taking something what you observe and see and translating it onto a flat surface in three dimensions. Simple idea, you know. 
and just don't rush it. Take your time with it. Enjoy it. Um, all right, so we're going to create a new page. I'm just I have this here because this is what we left off on. We did the the, the flag, looking at the principle and element of overlap, surface lines, um, and we also worked on this cake. And it started off as just a simple cake example, but then it ended up in this sort of complex, really interesting with all these textures and shading and designs. And I hope yours ended up really well too. Um, I believe, I'm not sure if this is, I think this is class six, that would be in class five if you missed that. And if you're starting from the beginning, it's a good idea to go back to, to class number one. Um, so, Let's move on to some other examples. That was from yesterday. <laughs> These are um, examples that come from the work of a book called The Drawing Textbook by Bruce McIntyre. And I started talking about Walt, Walt Stanchfield, and I got a little bit sidetracked into Robert Henri. And um, Walt Stanchfield, uh, well, Bruce McIntyre, Stanchfield was a Disney animator often referenced Bruce McIntyre in his writings. And Bruce McIntyre was a Disney animator as well. I think he went on to become an educator. And uh, he developed the elements of perspective and a, a drawing textbook to teach those uh, elements of perspective. And when I was working on teaching myself to be an animator um, and teaching myself to become a more fine artist than I was, um, and I took my art education much more seriously as my own pursuit, not just something that I did in art class, but something that I really wanted to master. I came across Stanchfield and McIntyre and Henri, and um, then I thought, man, I wish I had learned these things when I was in, in school. So um, that's why I became a teacher. Uh, so we're going to look at this example here. Um, I have the animation, we start with that division sign, which relates to what? Now you're gonna pause the video and think, which element of perspective do I see or which elements of perspective do I see here? Do that, pause it, look here, look over at the example and see which elements you see. All right, I'm gonna wait, go ahead and pause it. All right, you're back. Um, this is live, so it was one second. But uh, we see this division sign for the foreshortened square so we see foreshortening. We have these little rods that come sticking out of this box here. I don't quite know what this would be for, actually. Maybe if you had a parrot and a, and a coffee table at the same time, the parrot could hop, hop out on these sticks. <laughs> and uh, you put your coffee and stuff here at the coffee table. Um, but you have overlap for this. This stick right here overlaps the side of the box. Um, we also have a bit of a foreshortened circle on the end there. Um, what else? You could argue that the bottom of the box is closer than the top because it's towards the lower part of the page. You could say that there is some surface going on there. Um, in my final example, there is some shading going on in the final version here. Um, so for shortening, overlap, shading, and potentially some surface if you want to, uh, really get to the nitty gritty. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to make a new page. I'm going to make it my tablet here. I'm using a, a Wacom tablet. I, uh, if you can, I prefer, if you work in pencil and paper um, in that way, uh, and that's the way that I would prefer to work, I just feel like my setup for recording myself drawing in pencil and paper the lighting and stuff is not the best. It's easier for you to see what I'm doing here. But if you have pencil and paper, that's what I want you to work with. If you don't have pencil and paper, if you have a, a piece of paper towel and a crayon, you could still use that. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you have. Oh, I have some tea with some peppermint. I'm all set. Now, here. Here we go. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, that, that works, right? Okay. So I'm going to start with that division sign. Let me turn my tablet on here. There we go. We're going to start with that division sign. 
put the points out on either side. Do I, do I really talk for 20 minutes every time? <laughs> I apologize. So these two are parallel. And this one here and this one here are parallel too. Now if yours looks weird, it's because you put these points too far out and you haven't really foreshortened your square. You need to bring those points in some, like that, right? Now it's more properly for foreshortened. For sure, it's foreshortened. I hope this microphone's working okay. <laughs> it's picking up all my great material. Uh, this is angled this way, this is angled this way. This angles this way, this, an I'm getting better at using this tablet. The, the, pathways in my brain are being formed so it's not it's not like relearning it every day um, and it's taken you probably if you watch from the first video those first videos I was a little bit like I don't know how to make the lines um, so my lines are a little bit more sure now and if you've been practicing from the beginning too, from lesson one or class one you probably found that your drawing um, ability has progressed as well your lines, you're more sure of your lines, um, you're more sure of the angles, you're more sure of the perspective. And when I draw this bottom here, I'm making sure that if I put an arrow on it, it's following the arrow there, right? These are all parallel. Now, um, some people might argue uh, that's not exactly true when you're drawing in perspective, and I understand that this is more of an isometric perspective. Uh, to get technical, um, but for learning to draw in three dimensions, this is a really, really good way to start. It takes something that's really complicated and breaks it down into a formula. So we have our um, little box on the top there with the box underneath. This looks okay to me. Um, my lines are all relating to each other, right? So I think of lines going this way, this way, and this way, and then this way, this way, and this way, right? They're vertical, they're all, <laughs> these lines are relating. They're all vertical, and this, this, and this, they all relate in a horizontal way, and the same on the other side. Pepper is about to lose his mind. <laughs> Turn this microphone off. BRB. Okay, now I'm gonna pair this little mama. We are live in um, Mr. Mix Studios. Uh, that was just Jack running downstairs, and Pepper has an extreme fear of missing out. Oh, oh dropped the stylus. Fail. All right, so um, I was just saying that each line, and I apologize if Pepper barks and just blows your ears out, um, maybe I can go back through the video and edit it. Uh, you know, we're all suffering together here. My watch, my, my Apple watch will alert me when things are too loud and actually potentially damaging for my ears. There has been times where he's been going crazy barking, like especially when we're about to go, go out for a, and he is really excited about that and he's barking and my watch is like, yo, you're in an area that's too loud for you. You can't stay there too long because it'll give, bring damage to your ears. I mean, it's only, if they say if you stay too long, like 30 minutes, but you know, it only lasts for 30 seconds. Um, okay, so these little posts that come out, I have to, I, I said I was getting better at drawing with this thing, and now I feel like I'm not. Let me see what I look like here. Can you see me? You can see me. Okay, cool. Um, what's the key thing here, again, is like anything else, is getting these angles lined up. 
right? See how that and that are parallel to each other? The same with the other side. Same with the other post on the other side. And if anyone knows what this box is, you can shoot me an email. I don't have comments listed uh, on my YouTube video. Well, these YouTube videos, because these videos are meant um, for all ages. And if uh, YouTube's guidelines have it. So if, if your videos are meant for um, kids, I wouldn't say my video is just meant for kids. It's meant for anybody. But um, it's K to 12 age that I'm sort of giving these lessons for but if you're if you're uh, older than that of course you can, and you still want to work on drawing uh, definitely work on these um, but I would say normally people would say in the comments below tell me what this table is for right you can't do that you can shoot me an email brian.mcandrews at gmail um, and then I'm, I'm gonna add shading in to throw some shade on it not shade added I'm showing I'm, I'm showing shade I'm throwing shade on it um, and I might use my eraser to lightly um, erase that overlap there. Um, and even just, I'm going to use my eraser to lightly. The other way to do it is if you take uh, a shading stick uh, or a piece of paper towel or a piece of paper and you lightly, um, and you lightly just shade over your artwork like this with the paper towel, like blend over it very lightly. You lighten, the, you lighten the drawing up, and then you can work back in. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. You can go back in and then start to you know, really pick the lines that you're going to make heavy. And when you do that kind of a blending to the whole thing, I know my, my art teacher <clears throat> at University of the Arts used to call it, he used to call it knocking it back, knock the whole thing back. It unifies. It's a it's a good technique for drawing. It unifies the whole drawing with the same value, and then you can push the darks dark, and even take your eraser. Once you blend the whole thing that way with the paper towel, you can even come along with your eraser, and it probably won't work that well here, but um, you can imagine. Like say, let's say I come along, and I use a paper towel, and I blend my blend my um, my pencil lines pretty well so it creates this kind of shading over the whole thing and then I come along with my eraser and I can just lighten up see you can use my eraser then to carve out the lights Th that can happen digitally is just as well as it can happen um, traditionally and even traditionally I feel like it's a little bit um, easier nicer maybe some people might argue um, I, I prefer to draw with drawing. Um, I feel most comfortable with pencil when I'm sketching, although I do like some of the freedoms and some of the tools that digital art gives us. Um, this is a, a simple little example. I'm maybe being a little too uh, labored. You know, I do think, um, for example, <clears throat> If you're practicing a sport and you're learning to get good at, say, taking a shot or throwing a ball or something to hit a target or hitting a target with a ball, you don't spend 10 minutes really getting yourself ready. You shoot and then you miss or you make it in. You shoot and you miss and you make it. You keep taking shots, right? Boom, 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 boom. And I think there's something to be said for that with art too. There's something to be said for drawing a lot, drawing and then redrawing and then redrawing and then redrawing and then redrawing and then redrawing. So you keep taking shots, just like you're in basketball. You're going to keep taking shots. You keep doing, think of a drawing. Each drawing is like you taking a shot. And you're going to keep keep practicing redrawing things. And each time you're redrawing it, you're, you're taking more shots. And the more shots you take, the more accurate you become. Um, the accuracy comes from the practice. And that's part of it. And I'm not necessarily practicing what I preach. I'm being a little bit <laughs> too particular on this simple little drawing but uh, we have overlap and what what might happen to you and what happens to tons of students that I've, I've worked with and it's perfectly fine it's natural it happens to me you're um, and I'll do this on a new layer you may see that you feel like you're drawing like something weird <coughs> <laughs> 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 
It's okay, Pepper. <laughs> it really is okay. Hey, he was chill for a minute. He heard. heard. That's my fiance, Maria. Hello. <laughs> um, but yours may look like something like that. And the reason is, is because uh, you're not, um, oh, I'm, I'm still, you have to make sure that the angles, right, are are parallel. You see that? What happened was it was tipped up and was kind of like the one's going this way, one's going that way, which you might want to do. But for this example, if you're trying to figure out how to get it to look right, uh, if it feels weird, it might be because the angles there are wrong and you just need to correct them and bring it back in the sink, right? So let's look at uh, this next example. This is the pencil example. This is one that um, McIntyre uses a lot. I think it's a great example. I think if you're an animator or something, um, or you're working on animation, you know, trying to take make an animation where you can spin this or have the pencil like moving around and bouncing around and it turns into a wobbly pencil and stuff, it might be an interesting animation exercise. Um, but he does something, I think he introduces it at this point um, I'm gonna draw this first the compass and and if any of my students are watching <laughs> at home I am sure they're like oh gosh the compass um, so the compass tells you what does the compass do right um, there's lots of different kinds of compasses right there's this kind of compass boom, 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 which is kind of like this one and which way does the compass point N. N stands for north, right? Uh, there's this kind of compass, which is like there's a pencil here, there's a little pointer there, and you use it to draw circles, right? Pencils drawn in a circle. Um, and this kind of compass here. This compass, I always get confused. Is there two S's or one? I'm pretty sure there's two. <laughs> Uh, this compass is going to give us our perspective. What did I do? Okay, there we go. Oh, look at that. I can turn the whole thing on and off with the button. I didn't even know that. Um, it's going to give us the angle and direction that things are going to be moving back to in space. So it's a good idea when we're working on our examples like this, and I may, I may re start referencing, I may start referencing the compass very often. Uh, I, I draw the compass first. Right, like that. So it's really, what is the compass? How do we draw the compass? It's a foreshortened circle with an X on it. That's what it is. And the X, so it's not this. That's a target. <laughs> it's tipped down, right? Where's my, where's my trusty roll of tape example? Let me check my print real quick. Nice. I'm 3D printing some toothbrush holders. I've been meaning to do that. I was asked to do that a long time ago because I keep breaking. But now I'm trying a new kind of plastic, 3D printing plastic called PET G, which is harder, like a, a harder filament. It's not from above the compass, it's more tipped at an angle, it's more of an ellipse. <clears throat> so if your compass feels a little bit weird, it's because you probably haven't foreshortened it enough. So, and then the compass, we have these numbers, one, three, five, and seven. So if you were to say which, if I was to say to you, which direction is the compass going in? Um, what would you say? I'm gonna go ahead, pause the video and think about it and then answer. It's going in direction one, right? The, the point is going in direction one and the, the end of the pencil is going in direction five. Right. So oftentimes our um, examples are going to be going like like this or like that. So the first thing we start with is a foreshortened circle here. And then we have another sh circle in the back and they're squished. They're foreshortened. Um, I know I'm going to have a tough time drawing this way <laughs> on this tablet. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. And I'm going to extend this line out, and then we have our point. Right? Now, do we see what elements of perspective do we see being used here? Right? Well, the end is fairly foreshortened. Right? So we definitely have foreshortening. And you can pause it. You can think. Which elements do we see? Um, let me wrap this part on here, and in so doing, I'm sort of telling you which other one, what other ones in here. Oh, and let me play the animation too. Oh, oh, oh. The animation. I'm sorry. So I have the compass, and I'm going to build the thing. Oh, I didn't build it on the compass. What I did was I said, okay, the compass is right there. Let me just make sure I line things up with the compass. But I've come to be of the mind that it's just as easy to lightly draw the compass and build your example right on top of the actual compass itself. No big thing. Um, so, okay, so here I was drawing this. Those are surface lines, and those that said it get the credit, <laughs> those that guessed it right. Uh, we have a foreshortening here on the, the ends here. Um, this is a foreshortened circle. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Um, we have shading, right? And notice the shading lines, I'm, I'm dropping them in along this other angle, right? They're going kind of towards three. Notice as I get to the end here, I'm going to make the, the shading line kind of come to a point like the point of the pencil does. And the shading lines, I'm not just doing whatever. I'm really trying to keep them going at, towards direction three. Um, this is the toughest direction for me to draw with this drawing tablet. Drawing things this way is are so much easier. <laughs> Drawing things that way, I find so much harder. And that's just, uh, I guess, because I'm a lefty or, or whatever the case might be. Um, if I was drawing on like my iPad or something, I wouldn't have that problem at all. But this is the best way, I think, for you all to see what I'm doing. Because you can see this as, imagine this being the end of your pencil drawing on paper. And that's what I'm hoping you think, or think, or imagine as I'm working. Um, what am I stinking? Stinking watch. Okay. I'm just drawing some lines in here. Um, there's shading. There's some surface lines. There's foreshortening. Um, there is another one. Well, other two, actually. Uh, let me see if I can find the example. Not you. You can go away. <laughs> sure, say it. I hope I didn't mess anything up there. Um, okay, it's taking forever to save. Oh no, now it's not responding. Oh, PowerPoint, why why hast thou forsaken me? Okay, uh, what other elements of perspective do we see? Okay, let me do this. We're gonna, we're gonna boom, and then we're gonna boom, and we're gonna, okay, we're gonna skip it. <laughs> um, we see surface, right? The, f the back of that pencil's lower on the page relative than the top. So we see surface being used. But also, if you do it right, the back of that pencil should be a little bit bigger, and I think PowerPoint crashed, uh, than the front. So we're seeing size. So we see surface, size, surface lines. We don't really see overlap. Shading, foreshortening. You could even argue if you draw the back with more shading and more detail in the front, you could get a bit of density, but that's, you know, that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, okay, I'm just going to cancel that. Okay, okay, I'm cool with that. PowerPoint. <laughs> you didn't totally crash on me, and I appreciate it. All right. Now let's go to our next and probably final example for the day. This is a good one to scan sketch like we did earlier with the fishbowl where you start yours in pencil and paper and you bring it in and work on it digitally to paint it and color it. And I might do some painting and coloring right here to give you guys some ideas about how you might go about it. Um, let me find a new place on the canvas here that's uh, a little bit less busy. Um, so let's look at the animation. And maybe we can talk about, as we start, which elements of perspective we see being used, right? It starts 
Uh, I am. I'm going to get the hang of this, reorganizing windows and stuff while I'm working. Um, this starts with, and you can hear my little bark Iranians barking away. I hope my audio is on properly. Um, we have we start with the foreshortened circle, right? We have foreshortened circle and then another foreshortened circle within that. Then we have another foreshortened circle, which is sort of tipped at an angle, but we can imagine that represents the lid of this volcano that's popped off. So we have some foreshortening going on. Next, if we look at this, we see some mountains coming towards us in the foreground. Um, and you know, I've realized what I could have done is maybe put this mountain back behind that one just by letting this one overlap here. But we get this feel of some things are closing closer to us and some are going further back just by varying this element of overlap. Right, so there's mountains that are closer to us, and this volcano that's the top is popping off of is is uh, a little bit further in the back. Um, these mount, so we have overlap. So we have foreshortening, we have overlap, we have some shading going on right here on the sides of the mountains. You might find, uh, well, we have. Do we have size? We have this big mountain that's close to us and this little one in the background. So you might argue there's some size. Surface, this one's closer to us because it's lower on the page than say that one or that one. So this one feels closest. So you could argue probably that almost every element of perspective is used in this example. We'll start at the very beginning. Now, why do we start at the beginning? Where else would you start? True, because it's a very good place to start. And that's a quote from a song. Sound of Music. A quote from a song in, the sound, in a movie. <laughs> Called The Sound of Music. Um, okay, so I also realize that this is kind of uh, overlapping my whole... Um, so I'm going to keep that playing. I'm going to delete you. Rearrange things here a little bit, just so they're a little bit clearer. But we're going to start... I'm going to follow my own example. And if you, when you do yours, if you want to draw a different creature coming out of here, that's your prerogative. <clears throat> you want to make it SpongeBob popping out of the mountain, or you want to make it an octopus, whatever you might want to do. I think mine is very much based on McIntyre's. I can't remember exactly. Sometimes I change it up a little bit. Um, sometimes I don't. So I'm starting with my foreshortened circle. This is going to be my um, volcano that the guys pop the creatures popping out of you all you people who are into politics you might <laughs> you might have one of your one of the people that you're not the biggest fan of you know with politics it's usually it's kind of usually a I don't want to call it a game especially now because people's lives are at stake but um, there's usually people, be, you know, people don't like everyone else, and who they don't like is pretty probably pretty clear. <laughs> uh, you might have uh, some giant teddy bear coming out of this mountain. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna slope the the volcano portion a little bit more than I did there. And I had this drawn originally, this kind of. Um, put his eyes pretty far apart. Oh, and I, I overlapped his nose a little bit there, like he was. Uh, there we go. Can you hear that, um, 3D printer? There is something to me, like some people might, that might just drive them nuts. But for me, I love it. I love the sound of the 3D printer just zipping along there there's something like meditative about that noise to me like some people when they work they like to have the noise there's something called the pomodoro technique um, where you like put a kitchen timer on and you um he's just gonna get one hair now and it's gonna be curly <laughs> who is this creature i do not know Tempted to put an ear on him, like some ears. I don't know. I may, I may go in a little bit on him today. Like go by go in, I mean like goof around a little bit with the drawing. Have some fun with it, you know. 
it almost looks like this is like a giant like he's like an elf and he's a giant elf and this is an elf hat and maybe that's what mountains are maybe maybe mountains are little elves that have tucked themselves in and they have hats that are the tops of the mountains and that's what we're finding out here is like what like mountains are actually just elves who are sleeping at the moment <laughs> and you're like mr mick what are you even talking about and i'm like that's it comes with the territory here you're gonna learn some drawing from me and you're like i just want to learn drawing and i'm like yeah you're gonna learn also all of my corny jokes because i eat cornflakes for breakfast every day and it's just no i'm just i don't eat cornflakes but i might as well <laughs> um okay so there we go and there we go and go and this little guy is just creeping out and maybe you know what i feel like um he's happy he's a happy guy he's happy to see you and you know what i'm happy to see him this little guy <laughs> and i might take an eraser and just lighten up the background here overlap there and if you have a paper towel or you have an eraser you can just erase pretty lightly um, because we don't really need those background lines um, once once we uh, get things placed the way they should be And, you know, if your character looks more like my, more like that, this is sort of similar to what I already had. <laughs> Just more evolved, I would say. Um, what is going on here, Mr. Mick? What is this guy? I do not know. I do not know. But I do think that he's cute and so funny. And he looks so sweet. He's going to come out. And he's going to... He looks like a baby. He looks like a Teletubby kind of thing to me. I don't know. My students are going to pick on me for this creature. <laughs> uh, they are always on my smart boards. They are always um, goofing around. It's fun. All right. So... One thing that is happening in this, um, there's more of a box, right? There's more of a frame here. Uh, and that lets us decide what's the air. And I'm gonna find that front mountain here relative to the back one and that just, like that. And then for the um, for this, I'm actually going to put this one back behind that one. So we kind of have this one, then this one, and then let's do something where we vary that a little bit like that, like that one, right? So we're getting the overlap, right? This one overlaps that one. This one overlaps that one. And we get that progression of front to back. And then maybe we, you know, we imagine that there's another row of, of mountains back here. We can even find a, um, a little cloud here, a little cloud there. Yeah, I like, you know, I like this example much better than uh, the, the one I initially drew. And this, this one will probably, well, I mean, maybe I can take what I've just made here with you all and, and uh, take the, audio, the video from that and, and just put it in. <laughs> um, and I'm just finding some, some little changes here in the, in the, um, being a little bit, um, I don't wanna say careless, but I'm just, just blocking some things in. Oh, it sounds like the things have finished in the background, which is great. 
Um, now, the way that backgrounds work visually, it's something called atmospheric perspective. And the thing about it is as you go back in space, things get lighter and have less detail, right? So I'm just going to make sure that these background mountains don't get too drawn too heavy, um, only get little bits of detail in them so that the things that are darker and more towards the front feel like they're coming towards us. And that is the element of density, right? I realized as I've been working with students on landscapes that the element of density, which is always one that's of, of McIntyre's, you know, I love all of um, uh, the explanations and things that McIntyre has in his book. Um, but density, explaining density was always tricky. But if you think about density this way, as things get closer to us, they, they get drawn darker and with more detail. And as they go back, they get drawn lighter with less detail. So it feels like uh, they, the things that are lighter and with less detail are going into the background. Um, let's keep working on this. <laughs> Sound like fun? Sounds like fun to me. Um, I might rotate this just a little bit because I don't like... Um, oh, that's not a big deal. But see how the box is a little tilted? It bugged me a little. Um, I am going to take my eraser, just go over this all. Actually, I'm going to take my, my shading pen, this one here, and just go, oh, I'm going to make it bigger. And that might be too much. Let's see if I can lower it all the way down. Just go over the whole thing. So that's kind of like if you were to take a paper towel and just brush over your whole drawing, not really going very hard, just lightly giving it a brush where the whole thing gets a little bit lighter and the shading gets all evened out. And then I'm gonna go back through with my pencil here and, and darken some things and decide what lines are gonna be darker and which ones are gonna be lighter. Sort of like if you imagine in a camera, you're bringing it more into focus. This also reminds me a little bit of a garbage pail kid in the um, in the 80s and 90s when I grew up. There were these cards called garbage pail kids, and they were um, super popular. I realize now that uh, they would never be made because they are so kind of mean to certain people but um they were like you know they'd have a kid that was popping out of a garbage pail or something and he'd have some sort of name about you know stinky feet pete or something like that and there'd be some really really you know <laughs> like somewhat awful drawing of like him with some really really stinky feet But those things are those things are not okay today because that's really a kind of bullying. <laughs> it is. I realize that now. I didn't think about that. And what am I doing here? Now I'm just going back, going back through this drawing and um, just adding more little details. This is such seems like such a simple example, but I'll tell you what, as I've been teaching online these last few weeks. Um, the stuff that I would normally be teaching in my classroom, and normally when I work in my classroom, I, will, I do some little drawing stuff while my students do it because I can't spend all of my time walking around bugging my students because I feel like at times it's me bugging them. You know, I walk around and check in on them and see how they're doing and if they need my help, but uh, oftentimes I just need to give that a break because it just seems like I'm running around the classroom the whole time, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You gotta give people a chance to do some work and, you know, figure some things out on their own. Um, so I do little drawings and stuff too in class. And, uh, you know, this might be something that, that I would do in class. Um, although by, by, by drawing the whole time these examples online, because uh, I teach in the morning, I teach my normal classes and we're working on our projects like we would be working on except they're at home and here i'm just doing little I, i'm not I, I i realize i took away the example here um 
what I see here is not what I see here. I'm just sort of using little bits of overlap and surface lines and little bits of detail to make that overall part there just a little bit more interesting, right? And uh, I hope you're starting to, you know, whatever character, if you're, if you're making my little creature guy and yours too, I hope you're enjoying that. If you're um, putting SpongeBob in there or you're one of your parents <laughs> popping out of the mountain, maybe your little brother or sister, you know, or maybe your dog, maybe you have a pet dog or a cat and you're putting them in there, uh, turn them into a giant. Um, that's cool. I'm thinking this is a friendly giant, a gentle giant, you know, gentle giants are the best. You know, you might, you might know someone that's like a really tall person and you think of them as being a giant, but they're just the nicest people, you know, I've met people like that. They say, I think they say that Andre the giant, who was a famous like professional wrestler, I want to say that I heard that he was a, a gentle giant. I hope I hope so. I hope he's not wasn't some awful person. <laughs> but um, often, you know, you might see that with uh, a basketball player too. You know, like someone that's just um, just a super tall person seems like they could just be like, you know, mean to everyone because they're so much taller than everybody else. And no, they're just the nicest, sweetest person you'd ever meet. You know, they just they just have happen to be really really tall. I don't have that problem. I wouldn't say I'm short. I would say, as one of my coworkers says, I'm medium tall. <laughs> now, how might you, you know, you're, you could take your drawing. So I've really kind of improvised some extra details and stuff into mine that weren't necessarily in the first one. But in my improvised one, it's really got the essence of what the first one was. It's got those foreshortened circles. It's got the overlap of the mountains as they go towards us and, and, and back in space. You know, this one's in front of that one. Um, I might want to just come in with my eraser and lighten up this overlap to make that a little bit more clear. Uh, I have a little bit of density going on here in these mountains that are back here. I don't want to get too heavy with those because I don't, I don't want to confuse the viewer. I want to make sure that they know that what's going on here is what's important. There's my doggos. I think we're just about out of time, um, but this is, has been a lot of fun, and these are the these examples I've been teaching drawing these examples for like six or seven years. I teach them multiple times each year. And I've seen students who really work at these examples and mastering these principles go from not being able to know how to draw to being very good draftsmen. Um, and people that could draw already, understanding these principles and the vocabulary that goes along with it, understanding foreshortening and overlap and shading and surface lines, and they will take all of your drawings and your, your drawing ability. If you really work it, you already have a skill at it and, and a talent, uh, it'll refine that and make you even better. And like I said, I've worked on these for years myself, but I'm getting more each time that I do it too. So I appreciate you checking out my classes and being patient with my dogs. Um, I will be streaming, like I said, Monday through Saturday. So tomorrow from 1.30 to 2.30, I'm planning on streaming again. And maybe I'll start off with taking this drawing and doing a digital painting of it. So if you have a, f a, a, a paper version of this, and maybe I'll print it out so I can show you how I would take a drawing from paper and bringing it into the digital realm and painting it. Because there's just something that's so much fun about this drawing and this little creature that I think deserves a little bit more time. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed your cl the class, you've gotten something out of it. If you just come to this the first time, this is a more advanced example. We have some more simpler examples back in the le lesson one and two. Um, and I have a, my name is Mr. Mick. Um, I am a art teacher at Creative Arts in Camden, New Jersey. I teach middle school and high school students. If you want to email me, brian.mcandrews at gmail.com or bmcandrews at camden.k12.nj.us to get a classroom code 
to join a Google Classroom to share your artwork and get some other projects and ideas. And I can get an idea what all you guys have at home so I can maybe make some other lessons. If you have color pencil and you want to work on that, you have watercolor, you have some other things you want to work on. Because all of these examples you can work on with painting, you can work on with color pencil, and um, I would love to do that with everybody. So um, thank you for checking this out. I hope everyone's family is healthy and safe and doing well. Have a nice weekend.